Shalom. Today we're going to look at some small words and further investigate what it means to have cognates. These words are all going to be about making a loud noise. I've talked to other places about cognates where the substitution of different letters still leads us to a similar meaning word. So we don't randomly substitute letters in one word, but we substitute them according to the groups that they're in. So the first group I have listed there is sibilance, and sibilance are the S sounds that you make between your teeth. And so the sibilance in Hebrew are shin, sh, sin, samich, zayin, z, and tzadi, tz. Those are all sounds you make in the front of your teeth. Another group is gutturals, and I haven't listed them all here, only the ones we're going to work with today. Aleph is basically a glottal stop. It's not something that we are focused on or aware of as we learn Hebrew. Chet is an, also in the back of the throat. And ayin also pretty much is pronounced as a glottal stop, although in some dialects and probably in history, there was some sound in the throat, which you might hear in Arabic. I don't make that sound very well, so I'm going to pass that part of the lesson. And then we have what's called palatals, or maybe alveolar stops. These are made in the back of your throat, g and k. The most common of these noise words we're going to learn today is one you probably already know, tzacha, which means to laugh. Genesis 17:17. 17, 17. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? It has a few other nuanced meanings. In Genesis 21, 9, we see Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. And so we know Ishmael is older and he's making fun of his little brother. Then in Genesis 26, 8 and 9, And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Avimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. So they just weren't like laughing, because we see Avimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety, she is your wife. And how did you say she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. So we have a pretty good idea of what might have been going on in the scene, and they weren't just laughing. From this root, we have the name of Isaac, Yitzchak, Genesis seventeen nineteen, And God said, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall call his name Isaac, Yitzchak. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Now, in some later writings, we actually see the change of one sibilant for another, and we see that the tzadi will move to the sin. And this is used a handful of times in Tanakh for Isaac's name specifically, Psalm 105.19, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac Yishak. In the Strong's, this name, as it's written with the sin, has a different number than Yitzchak written with the tzadi. So there is a root related form of Isaac's name, Zachak, which is with a sin. Judges 16.25 And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And there it is written, Vizachek, with a sin. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. Vizachek, written with a tzadi. So they're quite interchangeable. And they set him between the pillars. In 2 Samuel 2.14, And Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise and play before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. Now they are not playing Monopoly here. This is going to be a wrestling match. Twelve from one group and twelve from the other. And in the end, everybody will be dead. Also translated to laugh is Psalm 2.4. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Now, as we substitute the middle letter, we go from chet to ayin, and it still means to cry out, to make a noise. Genesis 18.21 I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it. This is actually the noun form, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. Again in Genesis 4.10, And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. From here, changing the tzadi to a zion, it still means to cry out. 
Genesis 2.23, And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up to God by reason of the bondage. Also, again, talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, this time with Zion. Genesis 18.20, And Jehovah said, Because the cry, this is a noun form of Sodom and Gomorrah, is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Finally, we see all the three root letters are changed to related sounds. The sibilant at the front is now shin. The guttural in the middle is now aleph. And the palatal at the end is now gimel, sha'ag. But we still have a loud noise. It means to roar. Judges 14.5 Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnah, and came to the vineyards of Timnah, and behold, a young lion roared against him. Amos 1-2 And he said, Yehovah will roar from Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the inhabitants of the shepherds shall mourn, and the top of Carmel shall wither. I hope this has given you some example of what we talk about when we're talking about cognates. Till next time, Tasimata Inayim Ahashemayim. Keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.